na chineke na nke kuru mihe ni ime onye obu na ni ana zoputa onye obu na ni ya bu opu ya ni nebu ye na amen anyi we na ase eze bu bedin kosi na ro tuto na ejama na nsopuru site na ebige bi maru na ebige ise 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 Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remember blessed. If you are joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia, or any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contribution. Please, each time you watch my video, go to the comment section and put down your comments. That's it. Participating in this ongoing Shatima challenge need to grow up. So Nigerians began this challenge on Tuesday to depict the rather unusual outfit that the APC vice presidential candidate Kashim Shatima wore to the Nigerian Bar Association conference held in Lagos State. Now Femi Fanakayode expressed his displeasure with the challenge and he described those who participated in it as miscreants who are meant to be in the zoo. While well, many Nigerians caught in a cross different age strata have participated in this challenge. So the big question is, should they stop posting these images? Dr. Abati, Mr. Afeni Adesua, I find them quite hilarious. And I also think it also just boils down to a generation gap, not in terms of Gen Zs or millennials, but social media age, where with social media, they always find a way to make humor out of everything. The big question is, how do you wear a suit, a three button suit, Let's not talk about the time. Let's just assume that was the weather was cold and he just needed to get comfortable. But the sneakers, that's, that's just unforgivable. It's really hard to, to piece these three items together. So, of course, that's what's birthed these hilarious pictures that are now trending online. Well, okay. You want me to go first? Yeah. Well, see, <laughs> you know, one good thing about Nigerians is that no matter how tough a situation may be, Nigerians have developed this habit of looking at the other side. Mm -hmm. And on social media, there's a lot of entertainment. Mm. I mean, as hard as things are, uh, unemployment 33%, inflation 19.6%. Nigerians have developed the capacity to laugh at themselves. And during this political season, there's been very high octane uh, drama. It's, uh, a former governor of Bono State, uh, Shetima, in this particular instance, before now, it was a uh, Emilokan, mm -hmm. you know, the Emilokan drama. Look at the number of musicians that are producing uh, uh, singles on uh, Emilokan. Mm -hmm. You know, just pure entertainment, okay? So, and it's harmless, I think. Yeah. It may be dark comedy. There's something we call dark comedy. But, you know, I think that the fun at the heart of it, many of us find it really entertaining. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the reaction, you know, by... Uh, uh, Femi Fani Kaode is entitled to his own opinion, but I think it's a little bit overboard. If, when I reacted to the issue, I said, well, you know, uh, uh, Alaji Shetima's relevance is not really maybe sartorial elegance. They probably expected him to come in what he wears ordinarily, the Babariga. Uh, but he tried to wear suit, and uh, he must have been seeing uh, maybe President Donald Trump yeah. on television with those with those uh, long ties, <laughs> and uh, he wanted to emulate it. But even what he is wearing the jacket, some people have said this one is not a suit. This is a coat. Of <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have many colors, but in terms of the appearance, he wore a coat, you know, to an event of lawyers. But my reaction is that they should have paid people could, could have paid more attention to his message. Mm about what he and his principal, Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, intend to do to move Nigeria forward. You know, to do a lot, I just take three words from him, about the economy, about ecology, about security. And out of all the presidential candidates uh, that spoke there, he was considered the most articulate, you know, because he has or oratorical gift. But uh, that was overlooked by people who were looking for commenting. <laughs> However, back to Fadi Kaudi. Fadi Kaudi then wrote this long piece in which he was saying the people who were attacking him because of his sartorial uh, inelegance, uh, they are Philistines, they belong uh, in the company of animals in the zoo, uh, they are sociopathic uh, people, they are jobless clowns, they are, uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, adjectives. I think, look, uh, Fadika, they should just learn to take uh, cold water, you know, and uh, take some of these things with a sense of, uh, 
humor. People are not necessarily Philistines, you know, mm -hmm. or clowns, just because they are having fun at other people's uh, expense. But I think we should not forget his message about the importance of the economy, the ecology, security, and the commitment of he and his principal and his party uh, to make a difference. But it's then for the Nigerian people to decide. or appropriate, you know, to begin to start giving uh, religious colorations uh, to uh, these uh, attacks we are witnessing across the country. But beyond that, what do you think is the solution uh, to these seeming endless killings? Do you think uh, no, 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 our let security... Me address, let me address uh, the first question and concern that you raised. And... Um, the, the, the first thing I want to say is that as someone who reads extensively the, the news and try to get information, it does not matter to me whether it is, um, it is um, mosque or church. What matters, number one, is the fact that these killings are going on. So that puts to rest the suspicion, if you like, that I am just saying it is, um, it is uh, Christians alone that have been killed. That's not what I'm saying. I do accept that there are attacks that do happen 
to Muslims as well. But you see, Nigeria is not a country that is able to solve crimes and give you, without a shadow of doubt, the people who are responsible for any uh, act of criminality. But you see, there is act of criminality where armed robbers go and rob a bank and kill people. That's definitely act of criminality, and people have died in that act. There is also the, the, the act that, for me, is even worse than act of criminality, which it is, but it is sectionalized, if you like. And it is a way of thinking of some people that there has to be a reason why Christians are being attacked. So we, with all due uh, disassociating you completely as a station and you as an interviewer, from my opinions that I am expressing, and they are my opinions, I stand mm. up to them, I claim them as my opinions, mm. because they are based on facts that are collated over a period of time. Yes, Muslims are being attacked, but you cannot measure by number, the, uh, uh, compare them in any way, shape, or form to the numbers of Christians that are killed and the numbers of Muslims that are killed by these so-called uh, foreign invaders that are trained in Libya, that come all the way from Libya into a, a, a state in Nigeria and kill the people in the way and manner in which they had killed them. I'm not shy about offering my opinions, but I'm always very reticent about dealing with persons. <laughs> but it is inescapable that when a man has offered himself for public service, we are left with no choice but to contemplate their persons and necessarily offer value assessments and in most cases, subjective opinions because we're dealing with persons. But I would say that instead of focusing on the odiousness of the mass of those who have offered themselves, and they are mostly odious, it's been a gallery of rogues coming out to talk about wanting to be president of Nigeria from the one who was convicted Look, it's. Um, I recall that a few years ago I did warn that if we do nothing about restructuring our governance systems, the one that will come after Buhari will be worse than Buhari. And if you look at the gallery of rogues that have come out, it will be clear to you exactly what to expect. Let me start with the godfather of them or the Lagos octopus. It wasn't always like this between me and him. He's never seen me before. I never, not once. But when he was coming to power for the first time, I took night bus from Abuja to Lagos to come and vote for him. Prince Ademola Adeniji Adele, may God rest his soul. He was running as Sarumi's deputy. I slept in his house because his brother-in-law, my friend, lived in his house. And that was where I stayed whilst I was in the law school. I woke up in his house in the morning to go and vote. He was on his balcony. And he asked me, Man, D, Odin Lord Dibo Fumi Abi? I said, Ah, Papa, Emaru, A D all the way. Yeah, A D all the way. That was the mask. I voted him the first time he came around. He's one of the worst errors I ever made in my life because I batted, I helped to bat today's monster. Now, we have 22 years of his hegemony ruling over Lagos State, unchallenged, virtually untouched, unchallenged, supreme. In Lagos State, his word is law. He rules the street, even as he rules the chambers, both of justice and of the legislature. What has he battered? He is effectively a dictator 
he does as he pleases in Lagos State. There is a 22-year record to look at, and the record and the facts speaks for themselves. Res ipsa loquito, we say in law, the facts speak for themselves. In the last 15 years, the road in and out of my neighborhood has been a construction site, building nothing but greed, a veritable tool for the pauperization of a people and the enrichment of an hegemony. They've killed for that toll gate on his watch, under his imprimatur. Now he wants to be president. When we are done looking at his 22-year record, which will be close to 24-year record by then, we will then look to his health, his mental capacity. 50 million soldiers, they eat corn, they eat cassava in the morning, and that's the person who wants to be president after the current disaster? <laughs> let's leave that man first. But let's deal with the system that has brought some, that actually emboldened someone like him. To, Nigeria would have deserved Paul Ahmed Tinubu if he ever emerges the president of Nigeria. Nigeria would have deserved him. He would have been, yeah. I dare to tell this nation today that this is the problem. This constitution can never give us progress. This constitution can never give us peace. This constitution can never give us unity. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, Please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you're notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember us. Bye bye. See you again.